Welcome to La Mia Italy, a series of short videos by a Brit with Italian blood who's lived in Britain and Italy and loves them both. This is the story of the greatest event in my lifetime in Italy, Tangentopoli. It was the moment when Italian politics was turned upside down and it looked like Italians would turn their back on the old corrupt systems of post-war Italy and embrace a new and better order. It was on the brink of success when the old order reasserted itself in a different form, in the person of Silvio Berlusconi. Never has it been so true that sometimes everything has to change in order for it to remain the same. So what does tangentopoli mean? A tangente is a bribe, and more particularly a kickback, on a contract in which the cost of something, usually a public works contract, is artificially inflated and the extra profit shared with third parties, typically politicians. Poli comes from the Latin polis for city, so tangentopoli is the city of bribes. Everyone knew this sort of thing happened in Italy, and presumably elsewhere. What was different about Tangentopoli is, for the first time, it was properly investigated and the extent of the corruption was far greater than anyone would have believed. In 1992, the prosecutors in Milan investigated bribes taken by a Socialist Party politician over the awarding of a cleaning contract. The politician, Mario Chiesa, talked and the prosecutors spread their investigation. If this sort of thing had happened before, I suspect the prosecution team would have been quietly disbanded but in this particular case they were able to keep investigating and word spread in the Italian media. The Mani Pulite, or Clean Hands investigation, made household names of Antonio Di Pietro, Francesco Borelli and Gerardo Colombo. I'm not going to go into the detail about the investigations, but in general terms, all the established political parties, including to a lesser extent the Communist Party and the separatist Lega Nord, were found to have been taking bribes all over the place and using them to fund their political activities and sometimes lavish lifestyles. Socialist Party leader and sometimes Prime Minister Bettino Craxi practically lived in the lavish Hotel Raphael behind Piazza Navona in Rome. There were many examples, but a particularly notorious one was the Maxi Tangente, or Super Bribe, over approval for the merger of two chemical companies to form Enimont, with the money being shared between the Socialist Party and the centre-right Christian Democrats. Suspects being investigated often talked, partly because they saw others doing so and partly to avoid being imprisoned pending trial. Others killed themselves, such as the men behind the Enimont merger, Raul Gardini and Gabriele Cagliari. Politicians blamed the system, which forced them to take bribes for their parties. Investigations were also being held into corruption at two of Italy's biggest companies, Gianni Agnelli's Fiat and Silvio Berlusconi's Fininvest media company. Bettino Craxi made a famous speech in the Italian Parliament and, in a moment of apparent sincerity, said, enough hypocrisy, and went on to explain that political parties needed the bribes to finance themselves and that rather than declare himself to be innocent, he was in fact as guilty as the others. In other words, if everyone is guilty, then everyone must be innocent. Perhaps not surprisingly, all the leading political parties were swept away and new parties formed. Nobody knew what would happen next and who would win the elections. It was at this point Silvio Berlusconi entered politics in the form of his new movement Forza Italia, or Go Italy. He was a winner, a property developer who had made a fortune both from real estate, but also from building up a network of small regional TV channels, which he had been allowed to turn into national channels by the Craxi government in the 1980s. In fact, those laws were known at the time as the Decreto Berlusconi. Berlusconi accused the investigators of being politically motivated and abusing their powers, including by imprisoning suspects before trial. Forza Italia was successful in the elections of 1994 and formed a new government. Mani Pulite investigations continued, but life suddenly became difficult for the prosecutors. The Berlusconi government passed laws making it very difficult to imprison a suspect before trial on corruption charges and lengthening judicial processes, making it harder to obtain a definitive conviction before lapse of time rules meant cases could no longer be prosecuted. Government inspectors also investigated the Manipuliti prosecutors themselves in search of irregularities and investigations were started into Antonio Di Pietro. Although Di Pietro was cleared and no significant irregularities were found, the tide had turned. Investigations were wound down and the pool of prosecutors was disbanded. Di Pietro, in frustration, went into politics, founding the party Italia dei Valori, Italy of Values, thus proving, in the eyes of some, that Berlusconi was right and they had been politically motivated all along. Silvio Berlusconi went from strength to strength. As for Bettino Craxi, 
he went into exile in Tunisia as soon as he lost his immunity from prosecution as an elected politician and never returned to Italy. I can't help feeling that this was a missed opportunity to create a new Italy. I hope you found this video interesting. I'll be doing more videos along similar lines, so please feel free to subscribe. In the meantime, in bocca al lupo, and I'll see you soon.